Sorry, yes, sir, I have an idea, Whoa, sir. whoa, whoa. Let's say you have no idea and leave it at that, okay? No idea. Zip. None. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you didn't know were remakes. Well, why should you be afraid? You have nothing to hide. <laughs> no, I know. I know you know, so there shouldn't be any problem. No, there's no problem. Oh, try it on. For this list, we'll be looking at famous films that you might have assumed were original. Do you prefer any of these remakes to the original, or vice versa? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Last Holiday Gender-swapped remakes can be a hit or miss, but they're also a fun way to switch things up. Last Holiday is a comedy drama from 2006, starring Queen Latifah. What are you worried about? Take that they're going to fire you in gold. this place? You're the best <laughs> damn worker they got in this whole damn place. They're not going to fire you. You're just scared. You're scared of some man getting a hold of that booty of yours. <laughs> it's also a 1950s British movie with Alec Guinness in the lead role. In both versions, the story follows an ordinary salesperson who discovers that they're dying of Lampington's disease. Lonely sort of chap, aren't you, Mr. Bird? Looks like it, doesn't it? But what's all this about? Well, Mr. Bird, according to this X-ray, you are suffering from a very rare complaint known as Lampington's disease. They decide to take off on the trip of a lifetime and in the process, find love and a new lease of life. The original was written by famous British writer J.B. Priestley. It seems like an odd choice for a modern reimagining, but the themes and characters actually translate very well. Good evening, Georgia. Hi. How are you this evening? Good, thanks. Well, why don't you join us? You have plenty of room at our table, don't we, Matthew? Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, why not? No, please. Please come join us. Yes, come. It's decided. Although they did drop the twist ending. Number 9. Meet the Parents this star-studded favourite from 2000 was a box office smash. Both critics and audiences loved the movie. I had, I had no idea you could milk a cat. Oh yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Okay, then. can we change subject, perhaps? It spawned two sequels and earned Ben Stiller two comedy awards. However, it wasn't original. Eight years earlier, a low-budget indie film also titled Meet the Parents caught the attention of Universal Pictures. That movie tells the story of the hapless Greg, who can't do anything right when meeting his future in-laws for the first time. I've always believed a penny saved is a penny earned. It was only 76 minutes long, but according to one critic, much funnier and tighter than the Hollywood version. Whether or not that's true, the original is certainly darker. Jim Hertzfeld's expanded script for the remake also added a Hollywood happy ending. I like to think of it as a little circle of trust. Pam, will you marry me? Yes. Number 8. The Prince of Egypt Yul Brynner movies are prime fodder for animated remakes. Anastasia and The King and I both got the cartoon musical treatment back in the 90s, as did the biblical epic The Ten Commandments. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. The 1956 movie starred Brynner and Charlton Heston. It was based on Dorothy Clark Wilson's novel, Prince of Egypt which dramatised the story of Moses. The animated movie adds songs by Stephen Schwartz, and the runtime is significantly shorter. When I pass into the next world, then you will be the morning and evening star. One damaged temple does not destroy centuries of tradition, but one weak link can break the chain of a mighty dynasty. Visually, though, it owes a lot to the original, which was filmed on location in Egypt in glorious Technicolor. Scenes like the burning bush and the parting of the Red Sea pay homage to the Paramount movie, as does the animation design of the characters and costumes. Number 7. Coda the touching story of Ruby, a child of deaf adults, made waves at the 2022 Oscars. I got it.
but the movie was actually adapted from a 2014 French language film called La Famille Billier. In this earlier version, the protagonist's family are farmers, not fishermen. Otherwise, the plot and characters are very similar. Also a box office success, the French-Belgian film is itself very similar to a 1996 Indian movie, Kamoshi the Musical. However, it drew criticism from the deaf community for the casting of hearing actors in the pivotal parent roles. The US version improved on this, recruiting Oscar winner Marley Matlin and actor Troy Kotzer, who won his first Academy Award for the film. Uh, uh. She won the Yankee Miss Pageant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number 6. Three Men and a Baby Three Men and a Baby is an 80s comedy classic. Whoa! These diapers are way too big. What size did you get? They're though? ultra absorbent. The more absorbent, the better, if you ask me. It inspired a sequel, Three Men and a Little Lady, and six Indian remakes. But it's not the original. The version starring Tom Selleck, Steve Guttenberg, and Ted Danson came two years after the 1985 Oscar winning French film Trois Hommes et Coffin. Au clair de la lune, mon ami Pierrot. In English, that's three men and a cradle. The movie's premise has all the ingredients of the best French farce, but the absurdist plot, wit, and slapstick humor are also universally appealing. The French version has a sequel of its own too, set 18 years after the original. It follows the titular baby all grown up and falling in love. Hi. Number 5. The Departed Boston set thriller The Departed cleaned up at the 2007 award ceremonies. Do you know who I am? Huh. <clears throat> you met my friend, Mr. French, the other night. It bagged numerous gongs, including Martin Scorsese's first Oscar for Best Director. The all-star production was a hit with audiences as well as critics. But it wasn't the first movie to tell this particular story. The plot was inspired by real-life gangsters and FBI agents in the US but it was adapted from a Hong Kong action movie called Infernal Affairs. This 2002 film follows Lao King Min, a gangster and a spy in the Hong Kong police force. Simultaneously, Chan Wing Yan, an undercover cop, becomes part of Lao's gangster triad. The movie's writer, Alan Mack, cited 1997's Face Off as his inspiration. So indirectly, The Departed is kind of based on Face Off. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Troy? Now that is between us, okay? Number 4. The Sound of Music when you think of The Sound of Music, it's more than likely the 1960s classic that comes to mind. The hills are alive with the sound of music. But the story began long before Julie Andrews donned her wimple to play Maria. The movie is based on the life of the real Maria von Trapp and her family. She wrote a celebrated autobiography, which was turned into a German movie in 1956. I got you. Hedwig, Maria, Rosemary, and Martina. It later became a stage musical, which was finally developed into the movie musical we know and love. Both movies were filmed on location in Salzburg. When viewed side by side, the similarities are striking. But you do miss the songs. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Number 3. Some Like It Hot Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon play the central characters in the best-known version of Some Like It Hot. Running wild, lost control. Running wild, mighty bold. It's hard to imagine anyone else in those iconic roles but they were actually stepping into the high-heeled shoes of the French and German actors that came before. The first version of this cross-dressing caper was a 1935 French-language movie called Fanfare d'Amour, or Fanfare of Love. This was then adapted into a West German film in 1951.
Billy Wilder was heavily influenced by the German remake, which has a similar atmosphere and look. The opening moments are a bit different though. There's no Valentine's Day massacre in the original versions. The characters are just short of work. Goodbye, Charlie. No, Spats, no! No, Spats, please, no, no! Number 2. The Wizard of Oz L. Frank Baum's novels have enchanted readers since their publication in 1900. So really, it's not surprising that there's more than one adaptation of the story. The famous Judy Garland movie released in 1939 remains the definitive film version. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. But The Wizard of Oz had already been adapted multiple times at this point. The most notable is probably the 1925 silent feature. L. Frank Baum's eldest son is credited as a co-writer on the screenplay. The movie also stars a young Oliver Hardy as the Tin Woodsman. In a twist on the original tale, this Tin Man turns out to be a villain who double-crosses Dorothy and her friends. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Flubber The Robin Williams caper is a new twist on the 1961's The Absent-Minded Professor. I Am Legend Vincent Price and Charlton Heston were also the last man on Earth in 1964 and 1971. Anastasia The 1956 live action version stars Ingrid Bergman and Yul Brynner. What bothers me is the way you've changed. I'm the one who's changed. Yes, when we began you merely wanted to find out who you were. You said that was all you wanted. Freaky Friday Jodie Foster plays the Lindsay Lohan role back in 1976. I wish I could switch places with her for just one day. Cheaper by the Dozen Before this Steve Martin movie, there was the 1950 original. All right, you can open your eyes now. Oh. Well, what do you think of it? Oh, Frank, it's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. Beautiful. I'm glad you like it. Wait to see the inside. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Scarface When Al Pacino first saw the early 1932 gangster movie Shame of a Nation, little did he know that the story would become pivotal in his own career. But it caught his interest and together with producer Martin Bregman, he set in motion the creation of the 1983 Scarface. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? The original movie was based on a pulp fiction novel written by Armitage Trail and inspired by Al Capone. The screenplay was written before Hollywood began enforcing stricter regulations on film violence. But the filmmakers were advised to add a subheading and a prologue explaining that gangsters weren't good guys. The movie was both praised and condemned, accused of glorifying violence, but audiences thought it was pretty good, as did Al Pacino years later. So say good night to the bad guy. Go on. The last time you're gonna see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.